What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Taranzo Show. Wow, I know that I done fucked up doing too many fucking music reaction videos because that's literally what I was about to say next is we have another music review for y'all today. But we don't. This is the actual show. We're back, motherfuckers. It took me a while, and I'm so, 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 so sorry. But I had to run my views up, y'all. YouTube is willing to pay me soon. But you got to have views to do that. And y'all won't do what y'all was supposed to do, which is what? View the show. So I had to find somebody that would. And I did it. And so, yeah. So now I know my reaction people, too. Y'all got to start watching my podcast. I appreciate the support that y'all have been giving me, which is a fucking um, a lot. I have never seen or never thought that my YouTube would run that fast or views would even go that high. I was averaging about like 25, maybe 50, barely 100 views um, when I post something. And it was getting up to like, you know, days. And now I'm able to get like 500 to 1,000 within a day or two. So definitely has jumped up um, a big amount. But I still want to have some kind of like center base um, and or some people call it a niche where, um, yeah, where y'all can still kind of, you know, get to know me and see what I do and what I have to tell y'all. So. Yeah, shout out to everybody. Of course, y'all know Asantre slash Derek slash D Money Rick with the big ass. Don't tell nobody. Um, and we just gonna talk shit today. Let me put the blunt down. Look, I don't know what YouTube got going on as far as if they care if you smoking, if they don't care if you smoking. I watched the 85 South show. Yep, I'm snitching, and they be smoking all the time. So I don't feel like y'all should say anything to me if I smoke. Um. But I be seeing on like the Don't Come Right Girl podcast, they kind of keep it down to the side. So that's what I'm going to try to do, I reckon. But we got a couple of things to talk about. I have done some new stuff. I actually done security, believe it or not. Never in a million fucking years that I thought I'd ever be doing that. But shit happens. And welcome to Atlanta, baby. Um, and I did the R&B Soul Picnic Festival. It was rough, honestly. I was out that motherfucker from 10 o'clock in the morning to... 11 at night but it was really nice that is somewhere if y'all never heard of it send your mama out there next year it's about 45 50 dollars and you basically just have like a picnic tailgate you bring drinks food um they was cooking out they had like different vendors and i don't know it was just like moms out there dancing kind of felt like a barbecue cookout kind of vibe uh it was so many fucking people there and it was hot like hot as a motherfucker i'm talking about people were passing out then the motherfucker somebody they got a hydration station which is basically free water, but it's cases of water that they got sitting out in the sun. No tent, no nothing. So the purpose of that, you know, they want you to drink hot-ass water or, guess what, go and pay us money to get cold water. Guess what we did? Drunk the hot ones because they didn't pay us yet. We didn't get paid to the end of the night. Surprise. So we did what we had to do. But um, that was that. We also did the social life, which was the lemonade um, – is basically the same thing. It was at a brewery called Best Damn Brewery. So yeah, Best Damn Brewery is nice. I don't know what they do in regular hours, but that shit was nice as fuck. Um, the social club people threw like an event. I did security there too, which was nice. Um, what else have I been doing? I got back in the gym. Thank fucking God. And I mainly been doing like flexibility stuff, trying to work my way back into my little pole life. So y'all gonna start seeing videos of that coming up soon too. I know I've been kind of neglecting. Um, the pole and that shit is no ho. I tried to do it last night or the night before last, and I'm fucked up now. I can barely walk. I need to, never mind. But it's rough. It's rough. My hamstring is fucked up. The stairs is my worst enemy right now. I'm doing my best to take the elevator. But um, yeah. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. She is on pace to have the second best tour by. A rapper, any rapper in history, 120 million to 130 million dollars, and she added a second leg of the North American tour. So she actually might be him and become the most successful rap thing in tour. And my thing is this: I didn't even know Travis Scott held the goddamn record. I'm thinking it would might have been somebody like Drake, Eminem, or somebody like that. I never knew Travis Scott was the like the best selling tour of any rapper out of everybody. But shout out to him, I guess. I went to one of his shows when I first moved to Atlanta. He's pretty good. Megan is also on tour. Shout out to her. We're going to catch you soon, girl. We tried to catch you while you was here in Atlanta. Give us some time because you got a lot of it. You got a long tour ahead of us. I think hers don't end until like the end of September, maybe October or something like that. We're going to catch you at some point. 
And Glorilla, shout out to her too. I love Glorilla. Um, we a little late on the topic, but I do want to talk a little bit about the whole Cassie and Diddy situation. We're not really their situation specifically. Um, only outside of the fact that when I seen hers, it was it was kind of weird because she kind of had like a like when you saw it happening, you can see how easy and I guess like how submissive that she was to it. So you can tell, you know, that was not her first time getting her ass whooped. And some that I've been trying to take into consideration too, that was the only public ass whooping that we didn't see to the fact where he was, you know, kicking her, dragging her, grabbing by her hair, throwing fucking glasses and shit, like, you know, the vases and stuff at her. But that's only what we've seen. That might not even have been her worst ass whooping that she might have ever got. So shit is kind of rough. And I remember... Because I had, a, you know, I had a domestic violence situation happen to me, and I was always one of those people before that it happened, where it's like, well, you know, that couldn't be me. I was always that person, you know, I would never, never let that happen to me. Anybody putting their hands on me, the first thing I would do is something. But it's like when you're in that moment, it's a little bit different. But then you got, I feel like more, I don't know, different people to me, where it's like if I have to hit like somebody that I am dealing with, then it kind of feels like I'm hitting my parent. Like it just does not feel right. So it's just like you go into that like shock and they definitely, well, sometimes somebody, I think some people get the benefit of where you can kind of like see the red flags as they go on and they say, you know, they bark before they bite. So, you know, it might start off with them just hurting your feelings. It might start off with them, you know, yelling at you. Then it might move up to a push. Then it might move up to a slap. Then it might move up into them. Shit, some people, you know, putting a gun to your head. I didn't have a knife put to my goddamn throat. Like, and then, you know, if you decide to stay around, unfortunately, some people end them getting killed behind it but then on the other side of that you got some people where it's like they don't get no fucking red flags they don't get no warnings sometimes you pissed the wrong motherfucker off you would have never in a million years thought that he would do something like that and he off your ass you know in that moment so it's unfortunate as it is the best thing i can really tell people to do is you know pay attention to the red flags and if you don't, I guess, know how to leave, attempt to do it, with, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because you can say, you know, leave in the middle of the night or leave when they're at work or something like that. But clearly, that's what the fuck she was trying to do. She tried to leave when a nigga was in the shower when he still ended up catching her. So, I don't know. I guess use your best judgment. But um, definitely don't stay, you know, with somebody because that does not mean that they love you. And it does make sense as to where I can see why some people would think that. Because I remember growing up, I got aunts and uncles who them motherfuckers and duked it out. I'm talking about fighting like a motherfucker. Like, aunt they had a black eye before. My uncle, she didn't shot this nigga in the arm. Like, shit, they got real. But them niggas are still together. Nobody went to therapy. No, uh, you know, none of their parents you know nobody like that nobody called the police ain't nobody go to jail that was just you know what they do in their relationship and they still together for so many years so it's kind of easy to equate that to love but fuck that we ain't got that to do we ain't got uh -uh. <laughs> but no i'm gonna check and make sure we still going y'all because last time i recorded an episode for a whole goddamn hour there was nothing same episode right now i'm having to redo it surprise but yeah, if you have anything to say on domestic violence, you can tune in. Frago. If you're being domestically abused, please know that we care. Please know that you there's someone in your life who cares. Me personally, seen it all growing up. I've seen literally the worst, most heinous things happen. And I grew up to be a great person. I grew up to know that there is still good in the world. I grew up to know that just because it's bad doesn't mean it's going to stay bad. But that doesn't mean stay in your situation. If you can leave it, leave it. I want to play devil's advocate. Have you been on the other side of it? Have you ever put your hands on anybody? No. Mm. Here I go. <laughs> I am the person... <laughs> I have, listen, I have been in a fight with one of my ex-boyfriends. He tried it with me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would have never hit him first. Um, I, you you got it with me. Like, I love you. You're yeah. going to know exactly how I feel. When I put my hands on you, I asked you to leave 20 hundred times. And 
I tried to even push you out the door lightly, but you had to leave. Now, scope a bubble. But honestly, guy, I, I could see me fighting. I fought in a, a man in my relationship. I could I couldn't even see like I had this girl drag me, like literally like drag my ass. I ain't never hear her back not once. Like that's it's just not in me. But in the same sentence, me and my little girl cousin, duke it the fuck out. I we be fuck you up, Shaquanta, to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, shout out to Taylor. You know you're my favorite cousin besides Kiki. Yeah, love y'all. <laughs> but listen, you know, we really we had the one day she punched me in the eye when, we, when I was driving. My mama knew car. Here I go, oh, big, you done did it. <coughs> Listen. Here I go, I really had to sit and wait for like 10 minutes. Then I was like, yeah, bitch, now I'm getting my lick back. Boom. My cousin but we cousins, y'all. It's diff- Don't get into family drama. That's something. The family is always going to go back to being family. This motherfucker went upside my head with a ravioli can. <laughs> a fucking ravioli can. Yeah, I was like 10 years old. Now. I ain't fucking lie. insane. I hit my little brother with a doorknob. But you know something? That bitch hit me with an iron. You know what I was when I was younger? A biter. Rest in peace. I would have the shit out But of rest you. in peace. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> um, what else? Nah, I always had to get my leg back as a kid. No, me. To this day, I still gotta me? get my leg back. I, you're, you hit me. You got a lick, I promise. I don't even... Like just that. do a lick back. <laughs> we gotta keep going. Like every time is on site until you apologize. Until I know it's cool, and I'm, I'm assume every time it's war. Apologizing. It's war. Every I time. don't care how we end it. I can love cousins. you with everything in in me. I promise you, I'm not apologizing because I know for a fact I wouldn't do you that way. <laughs> and we wouldn't even be in this situation <laughs> yeah, no, if it real. was me. But that's why we don't got issues. Yeah, them little motherfuckers. Straight to the chin. <laughs> for real. Seriously, D. I do want to drop in just because he's a piece of shit as well. Meek Mill was arguing on Twitter. I don't know who he was arguing with, but um, he was, okay, 21 Savage said something about Soldier Boy, if I'm not mistaken, and Soldier Boy, and it has something to do with Meek Mill. So Meek Mill quoted it and said some shit. So Soldier Boy quoted Meek Mill and was like, didn't Pete Diddy fuck you in your ass? And I just live for it. I really did. <laughs> I really did live for it because Meek Mill is a different type of piece of shit. Woman beater. He's just as worse, which makes sense as to why he was hanging out, you know, with P. Diddy all the time. And that's another good point, too. Those kind of people that do weird stuff like that, look at the people that they are um, hanging around. Look at the people that they're hanging around, um, especially outside of like if they're not just like, you know, like making a song together. These niggas was partying together, like, you know, making videos and stuff together. So. But I think it's after the allegations came out, y'all were still around this man. Y'all still have people. That yeah. dude, what's that black man? He's still uplifting him. Like Ray J or Stevie J, whatever his name is. Stevie J. He is uplifting that man to the to the motherfucking utmost. And the videos are out now. How do you feel, Stevie? What's your thoughts on this? How he treated Cassie? Because I guarantee you were there for 85% of those instances. And you already know about. him and Jocelyn was duking it the fuck out, so I'm pretty sure he ain't got no <laughs> stance on that. He don't, he come around here, Stevie. Jocelyn don't fucking play. I'm oh, giving Jocelyn. Oh, speaking of that, because they got a big age difference too. I wanted to talk about that, which is dating age differences. Um, now, me personally, I was like really, really big on like not dating people that was. I had like a three-year rule. You had to be three years older than me or three years younger than me. And if you was not in that, I was not willing to talk to you. I didn't want to entertain it. I saw you was ill, you too young or ill, you too old. And I got tricked by a nigga, which happens, well, whatever. Um, I got tricked by a nigga, and he told me that he was 27. And at the time, I was 23, 23 or 24. And... um. <coughs> Yeah, so we was going together for like two months. I ended up looking at this nigga's ID. And my dumb ass, even when I looked at it, I still didn't like process it. Um, and then more time had went by and he ended up telling me. He was like, um, you know, I'm actually 34. And I was like, why did you lie? And he was like, because I remember when we first started talking, one of the first things that you said was that you're not into older guys. And you wouldn't even give them a chance. So I kind of wanted to show you like who I was kind of thing. Manipulative bullshit because you shouldn't have fucking lied. You're fucking creep. You're a weirdo. But 
on the other side of that, it kind of opened up my mind. Yeah, I was like, damn, I was kind of being, you know, like a little hard on people because it's not really, you know, about the agents. It's about the mental thing. However, I think there is problems where um, people do, you know, older niggas do seek out younger people. And then it's a lot of younger people who seek out older people and everybody, you know, for different I benefits. I for ages about this specifically, that specifically. Especially the older coming for the younger. My mom's, my little brother's dad is like, in my head, he's 20 years older than my mom. But they always tell me I'm lying. Um, fuck my mom and all that. My own personal issue. Shout out to Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, that was on him. <laughs> not if but you know, y'all situation. And you want to raise up. No, no, no. I guess. Um, but no, <coughs> me personally, my first real relationship as an adult was with somebody way older than me. And granted, I never, we never had like a really just an intimate relationship. It was like my first real bond in my adult life was with somebody. I'm, t- I was 19. So she, every bit of 50. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but like, wow. literally like, wow. and like, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. Like the man took me out. Never, never tried to touch me or anything like that in weird ways up until that's a different story. Um, like, he was a great, like, D, when I tell you everything I ever wanted, somebody to listen, somebody to be there, somebody to just understand me for me and really just, like, not ask me for anything. Oh, you don't want to kiss me? You just want to sit up, like, be my friend. At first, he started off his friends. Like, I felt like he was more of a friend than a boyfriend, but we had the relationship. He was my boyfriend. Like, you my, you my boyfriend. You my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Look, well, he's a yeah. white man. You my queer man. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, shit. It was everything, but I, the stuff that I really wanted out of a relationship, so I wasn't looking for that here. I go, mm, yeah, young boys again. But nah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Like to this day, I know for a fact I could call him. He'll pay for whatever. Like he coming through. Like so, I I understand why people get with older people because they're more secure and they like there are some good ones. But yeah. at the same time, like I'd have been with another older man who was only ten years older than me, and she I ended up dating his daughter. That's a different story for a different day. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I tell you that was the most manipulating bitch, and he was doing shit I never knew about. He was this man. The reason I broke up with him because he gave an underage boy a bottle of liquor on my motherfucking birthday at the store next to me. No, at the store that I worked at, and he worked at the store down a, a little bit, and he finally bringing a little fucking liquor bottle. Here I go. What's this about? He like he made my pizza. I'm your boyfriend. What? I work here. I was what? What? How did he even? How did you talk to him to get your pizza made? <laughs> I know how to make pizza. <laughs> yeah. And so that was just, yeah. I'm fucking weak. Yikes. But I, I, I definitely, I've been through, love is love. I just don't date younger. But older, you got me. <laughs> yeah. I'm I will that, date I think I'm a in little that phase younger. Too, like, it's like, I'm kind of. 21, you can stupid. get in a casino, you good with me. You can't get in a casino, you can't do shit with yeah. me. Yeah. I and then know. nowadays, they want you to be 25 to go in some clubs, so shit. I'm 27, so I'm not finna motherfucking. No, we're not. I can't go here because you're not older. <coughs> that's a, that's look. I'm done with that. I've been past 18. <coughs> yeah, dating wise, I can't see it anymore. She was 18 um, when I was lit. But I still, I don't know. I just want somebody the same age as me. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> now I would prefer somebody my age. Like if I woman wise, I like older women. But at the same time, them older women, they play mind games. So I would date a woman two years younger than me before I dated another older woman. But with a man, I want a man older than me than younger than me because I don't got time for that childish ass game. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I love them all. back to the childish Look, ass games that they play. <clears throat> That's a mess. I'm sick of but I can't be broken no more. And I can't fix nobody else. Oh. Come together with your shit. Uh, okay yeah the next thing i do want to talk about is entrepreneurship um and also content creating uh first of all i think that it's a cool thing like the age that we in because 
everybody has more of an opportunity to literally do anything the fuck you want just from your cell phone. And if you really think about that, it's kind of wild. Like, you can do everything from your phone, from making the content to editing the content to posting the content to marketing investing the content stuff. to investing in the content. Like, that shit is fucking, it's crazy. Join acorns. Literally. Kind of so it's like, I don't know. It kind of gives me hope um, in a way because it's like, I don't know. I be thinking about the people who don't plan on traveling and for the people who don't plan on, you said my what? Oh, thanks. Um, but yeah, the people that, you know, don't really go anywhere, don't have no plans of, you know, like leaving their city or, you know, nervous to leave their city or, you know, some motherfuckers scared to leave their actual house. Mm-hmm. But it's like nowadays you don't really have to. It's people that go live and just talk shit or people that just live stream um, all goddamn day. Kai, people like me Kai, make reactive videos. Yeah, Kai's he not in his got house big from living his life. Being himself and being real to himself. And I fucks with stuff like that. So. Speed got famous because he lied. He showed that meat. <laughs> look, Speed, Is that the friend? Look, I show Speed. He showed that meat. That, that. Wow. <laughs> so that's when he just got big, big. Nah, he was big before that, but. He got real big when he showed that meat. You gotta show me the pictures. I haven't seen it. I got them. I want to see it. I got them. Um, but yeah, no, and then it's cool to, especially a place like Atlanta where you can, you know, collaborate with other people who, and I can only tell you, like, since I moved to Atlanta and started, you know, like, really doing this, I had so many people um, that just want to just do shit together. And it's easy to do and it's inspiring. And I don't know. I just want more people to do that. And not only that, traveling, too. I think a lot of people should get out and travel. It's not as expensive as you think it is, um, especially for the people who have not been anywhere at all. And even if you, you know, don't take, like, a big trip, just look up. An hour outside of your town. Yeah. Like it's a, different. I literally. Promise. One hour. It could be to a fucking lake, a hiking up. site. Go look up a comedy club near you. Uh, you know, some people... It, the people I done met, that's like 25, me, 26. I've never been to I a concert. I don't leave anything in life. I want to leave people knowing, like, go five miles out of your city. Go 10 miles out of your yeah. city, please, for me, if nothing else. It's definitely worth it. And you just going to look at life a lot different. You're going to meet, like, a lot of different people, see how different people it think. It's better. Because it's it worse. Yeah, <laughs> and it gets depressing, especially if you stay, you know, in the same spot for too long. And everybody's thinking the exact same, and it's like... I don't know. You just need. I think you, you just need that drive and excitement traveling. to keep moving. Definitely, and then that might give you the inspiration to move the fuck out from where you are. You might go, okay. You know, I like it. Uh, you know, here a little bit more. Whether it's thirty minutes away, an hour away, you decide to just hop the fuck up and go on to Cali. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth it. And if you are doing it, and for the people who you know you feel like it's moving a little too slow, or you're not you know making money from it, just keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it. It's definitely gonna pay off. Even the days that you don't feel like doing it, just get the fuck up and do it anyway. And that's kind of um, what I've been learning. And it was something that I seen on YouTube, which kind of you know pushed me before, where he said, "You've already you know attempted it." He said, you've already attempted it before, and you know what it feels like where you half-ass it. So attempt it again and go all the way and see the difference. And I feel like I've been going all the way, and I see the difference, not only just in this and the views and stuff like that, but even when I've been, like, going to the gym, I got, you know, a lot more flexible and stuff. That's why I'm excited to get back on the pole. And then, damn, I, gotta, I lost my train of thought earlier. And I was talking about entrepreneurship. Um, I didn't start it. I don't know how fucking many different things. I first, I remember when I started, I tried to do a um, language channel. I was talking different languages. It was like Toronto language or some shit like that. And I had like these like funny little skits that I was doing. Um, And it was cool and it worked out. And then I just stopped doing it. And then I started doing um, Toronto News. And I had like a whole like media page. Um, and then it got like so good and I had got like so many followers, I needed fucking help. So I had like two of my other friends and they was like, one of them was posting the sports stuff, one of them was posting the funny stuff. And then I was just posting like the, you know, the celebrity stuff. Uh, and then I, you know, I got birthed off from that and then I stopped doing it. 
I moved on, opened a fucking dance studio in um, Norfolk. Uh, did that for a little while. That didn't work out. I moved here, and now, you know, I'm doing podcasting, and I'm doing YouTube. So it's like I learned something different from each experience that I did, and I don't regret any of it at all. And I don't know, it just gives you more drive to see that you can keep going. You can look on the stuff that you like, you know, you kind of tried to do. And I can't admit, in most of the stuff, I was half assing. Like, I could have actually went harder, and, you know, it could have been bigger than what it was. But now I got the knowledge from even trying, which is the whole point of it. And I feel like I'm going to take this to the next level. So that's my spiel on that. If you have anything to say or add, you can. Here I go. I have worked every job, everywhere, anything you could think of doing, I have done it. I promise. <laughs> I have never been more fulfilled and more happy knowing that I don't gotta work up. I don't gotta get up on nobody else's time. I can work for myself. I can make money on my own time. Yeah. Just buy what I need as I need it. And that's like that life. is my life. Like and that's the best life for me personally. Mm-hmm. It ain't for everybody. But one thing about it, when you don't spend money and you're always working, <laughs> yeah, it's up. And it's worth it. Like, you don't have to take the normal route. You could go something your parents never thought of. You could do something your parents never thought of. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm up here right now with Joey. <laughs> yeah. My mom had barely been out of her state. She just started traveling um, in COVID when they needed the nurses everywhere. That's her first time ever really just doing any major traveling. And I'd have been all over the fucking world. Yeah, same. Me. My mom was just getting her traveling back too. And yeah. all that is possible because I decided to believe in myself and say, let me try and make some money on my own time. Let me try and see. Screw that job. They want me to be there by eight, but I might be doing something else until the end. So I could try and make some money. So why when eight come around, I might not go in. No for and real. I stopped going in. And heavy on fucking that. If y'all only fucking knew, literally, every, I can't even, I don't think there is a job that I ain't fucking done. <laughs> like, I didn't work every goddamn restaurant to fucking, I didn't sell fire extinguishers, I didn't sell cars, I didn't sell furniture, cell phones, um, fucking, my, one of my very, very first jobs was incense and CDs. I was working with the uh, Muslim dude on the corner store when I was like 13 years old. Um, I done done goddamn customer service, vacations. I don't know. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. But I don't know. You just kind of learn different shit, um, especially on different jobs. And just as you go on through your journey and as you travel different places, just go out and do shit. That's all I'm trying to say. Just go out and do shit. Just have fun. And don't let your job stress you out. If it's stressing you out, I know, you know, jobs are kind of hard to come by at times. And at the end of the day, you know, you do got bills to pay. But, you know, at least do yourself the due diligence. If you fucking, you know, you hate your job, make sure that you doing what you can. Do five applications a week. Yes. To where, you know, you try to get something else set up. Yeah, don't let this just stress you out. There's always somewhere else you can go that can make you a little bit happier. And guess what? They're going to replace your black ass anyway, whether you want to leave or not. So it really doesn't matter. The second they can, you're mm-hmm. gone. <clears throat> um, Let somebody get up in there and increase their rates by 15%. You out of there. Increase their profits, my bad. Because, y'all, that's me. I'm, I'm the type of person, I will come to your job, especially don't let me come to your job and you piss me off. I will come to your job, get hired right there, outwork your ass, and take your job. All because you and then I'm gonna quit the job after you get fired because I don't want to work here. (laughs) This ain't for me. Don't piss me off though because I'm coming for you. That's how much free time I be having, (laughs) y'all. Let me see. Oh, okay. I do want to talk about um, new generation. New generation, no communication skills is what I wrote down, but I'm going to have to break it down. Well, it's already broken down. You people are smart. Um, They don't know how to talk to each other. So they did this experiment at this high school where basically they found different couples around the high school, you know, and they set them up on like a really nice date and, you know, they pay for the food and 
they basically, you know, they let them be on a date and they try to see, you know, whether they can, you know, hold the conversation. And if you can see the fucking, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can just type it in on TikTok. Um, you know, kids, whatever I just said, I don't know, put it together. But yeah, they didn't know what to say to each other. They was on their phones the entire time. They was either looking down, only they could say, "Ooh, damn, the food good," or what the fuck else did they say? Oh, well, what you doing after this? And like that was it. Like they didn't know how to like you know ask about your family, ask you know what type of shit are you into? What's your favorite? I mean, any goddamn thing. What made you put that on today? Oh, you look nice. No compliments, no nothing. Like it was, everything was like dry, and it was weird, and it's kind of strange in a way because i don't know it's giving like robot tees look i'm and they can see that <laughs> on camera y'all the budget is fuck get us out the hood <laughs> the cash app is right here um but yeah the newer kids are fucked and then on top of that a lot of them i see where especially my brothers and them they literally would like go to sleep on like facetime and shit like that and they still would not not they will not say anything they'll be on facing for literally a whole goddamn 24 hours and they just know that each other's breathing it's kind of insane and we be on facetime but we're fucking best friends y'all in a relationship y'all have no substance at all it's kind of sick and the second something comes to one of our minds literally we intrusive thoughts and all (laughs) conversation is gone (laughs) (laughs) but we're best friends so we can sit on the phone and be doing other stuff still yeah yeah it's kind of weird and i don't know and then i think i had told you that already i asked the boy i was like why do y'all sit you know on facetime and not say anything i was and he was like well i'd rather me be on the phone with, what he said i'd rather be on the phone with her so that way i know that she ain't doing shit so it was like damn y'all are that fucking insecure and controlling <laughs> yeah but it's on the flip side too she want to be on the phone to make sure he ain't doing shit so it was like two non-trusted motherfuckers just i don't know but then again they kind of slow because their cereal was different than ours the milk baby stuff they're yeah. fucked up yeah. there's no help <laughs> i'm sorry my brothers i think was on the year cusp they kind of got it together my middle brothers the younger one he's screwed but he got a big support system so <laughs> i think <laughs> i think he'll be okay shout out to you Warren. um yeah we're gonna wrap this bad boy up we got to do our three little segments really quick um of shouting out people i'm gonna give lord look i'm scared to shout somebody out then next week they be on the goddamn shade room for allegations and stuff <laughs> you don't know who to fucking trust um but yeah i'm gonna do kudos i'm gonna give it to drewski uh which is one of my favorite male internet comedians he is amazing um he do i like that he does like original content is realistic and it kind of feels like i don't know like you actually had that situation happen to you it's not like you're kind of like oh well damn i can kind of see that happening he do shit that nigga you done really been through um his lives are funny the could have been records i see that he got a tv show and it's crazy how i watched him doing the could have been record thing on live where he was just like fucking with people bringing random people on live having them rap and he was just like joking and fucking with them and he didn't actually got signed and you know he got him a tv show so i love it i love it i love it um i like the fact that he embraces his body when he be doing his skits too he don't give a fuck if his fupa hanging out his ass crack is showing he does not give a damn and he still be doing um i see like a lot of bigger guys they try to only do stuff where is or they try to stay or shy away from making themselves look kind of like a sex symbol but he don't give a fuck like he still be doing you know like pulling girls and shit like that i don't know i just think it's cool like when people is that comfortable with themselves so um and yeah and the last thing i put he reminds you of just like your funny ass cousin that's just like just keep you laughing no matter what you can't wait to see him every time you know you had a cookout every um holiday thanksgiving y'all just smoke sit in the car and just talk shit all day long so yeah who you want to shout out anybody you want i'm shouting out the 13 jurors who just found donald trump guilty (laughs) (laughs) y'all was dead wrong for that (laughs) 
And I want to give y'all a donkey of the day because who going to give us some money now? Who going to give us some money now? I'm fucking weak. No, definitely lock that piece of shit. Hold on. Get him out of here. He's gone, bucko. And they said the motherfucker's still running. I don't know what this country's doing. I'm broke. I need daddy to come <laughs> save me. Better off getting Biden as a sugar daddy because that's he just gonna not gonna happen. Biden. Trump ain't got no goddamn money. He's that's why he's fucked down. He ain't got no money to get them people. They would have left him alone. But he, they believe he do. Look, <laughs> he keep getting away with shit. And I need Anna some Delvey. Of that. He's an Anna Delvey girl. Stop <laughs> screaming. That's exactly what the fuck that is. Uh, 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 I had a would you rather. Um, okay, would you rather do? I don't think this is enough days. Okay. Would you rather do two years in jail or 40 days in the jungle? And you got to think about this. You in the jungle. Ain't no help. Ain't no soap. Ain't no wash rag. Ain't no food. You got to kill everything you want to eat. And this is for 40 days straight where you're going to sleep. You ain't got no house. You have nothing. In jail... You got food, Big. dingling, <laughs> clothes, shower. Oh, no business up enough. Hello for two years. The I can't. Good lie. behavior. Look, <laughs> it yeah. would be the lock me up. Showers by eight. This but bitch, no, I'm not on your time. That's why I stopped working. Entrepreneurship. Mm. Back to the previous topic. Topic. I'm going with the jungle. If I see a snake, it's over. Challenge that is over. Be, hey, I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> see, and look. Now it makes sense. He off-wired anyway. It's because he's been eating snake. And it was probably rattle. I know you was eating rattle. Uh, uh, uh. Don't want nothing to do with cobra it. Cobra well, he's going to the jungle. I'm going to Rikers Island with my man. The second some people put the cuffs on. I got a pen pal in Rikers Island. That's what I need to get. A couple pen pals just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, one daughter, the one daddy Trump fucked me over. <laughs> I had another segment I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I, oh, word of the day. Okay. Word of the day. Okay, there we go. Awesome. The word of the day is accountability. Um, accountability was introduced to me in many different ways, but more importantly, more so, and more recently, uh, through one of my good friends, um, C. Bell, which she's going to come here at some point. Cannot wait to see her. But, um, basically if having accountability, I think comes a lot from you caring about a person enough to be accountable so if you do something wrong with somebody apologize for doing it if you know that you fucked up don't wait for you know them to address it or something like that um you know own up to it and that's how you build stronger relationships and don't try to you know gaslight people don't try to you know make them feel sorry for reacting because you did a certain thing to them just be accountable um and I remember when there was a point when, you know, I would get called out, you know, for doing something or hurting somebody, feeling something like that. The first thing I would do, you know, is get offended and I would, you know, just want to get away from them or, you know, it would start like kind of like a violent scene or something like that. And that's all because I didn't want to be accountable and I didn't, you know, one, respect them enough at the time to even know what that was. So. Yeah, I don't think it makes a big difference all the way down to, um, you know, with your parents, all the way down to parents. If you, you know, you have children, if you know, you know, you fucked up and I don't know, I think it's just good to address it. Do you have anything to say about that? Be accountable. <laughs> <I'm> with- <laughs> um, what else was nah, I going to say? Um, people be trying to play people like they're crazy. When you try to hold somebody accountable and the person doesn't want to be held accountable, they'll like start trying to play on your intelligence. Yeah. That's called manipulation, you guys. Yeah. 
and it's not right it's just not right but you know and that's one of the things that keeps you from being a narcissism is having empathy for people and once you just start having empathy that's when you start in holding you and other people accountable and that's another thing hold other people accountable too you know what i mean let motherfuckers know if you, if it's something that they're doing that you don't like um you know don't build up like a hidden resentment or anything and then one day you kind of just like you know you go off you know this you know do this or that um let them know hey i don't like when you do that it makes me feel this way um i don't know just you know basically just kind of speak up and even if you feel like you know you doing something wrong to somebody and you feel like they don't speak up or don't want to speak up um i think that and you can kind of you know like kind of tell something's off i think you speak you know up on that too because a lot of people are not really i guess like vocally inclined um in a way and those be the kind of people that will essentially you know they'll just kind of like start acting different or they'll start you know not hanging out as much and start doing like weird shit stuff like that so i don't know just be aware of the people you're around be aware of people's feelings if somebody tell you you know don't do something don't do it you know again don't do it as jokes you know respect people's boundaries and that's how you have strong relationships with people so i lose a lot of every relationship i've ever lost is over my boundaries yeah like i stand on my business when it comes to that like don't disrespect me because i love i'm a lover i say this in this episode yeah. a lot throughout this episode it won't be me it'll be you like i look i'm choosing love i'm choosing to make you feel at home and peace please don't make me get out of my comfort zone yeah one thousand percent and that's pretty much that y'all um i got a long fucking night ahead of me i have i don't know what i have to be honest because it's almost midnight so i got to do some more reaction videos which is pretty fun i don't know for more content creators out there even if you are doing something else i think you should definitely look into reaction videos they definitely run your views up not only that um if you do it how i've been doing it i've been doing reaction videos on people i don't know who the fuck they are for the most part um especially you know with some of the features they've been having i've been doing reaction videos on like game trails and stuff like that and i've been learning a lot it kind of feels like you watching like documentaries in a way um, because I've been hearing about, you know, a lot of different, like, famous artists and singers and stuff like that, and I never knew any of their music. I know their names, you know, they go to the Met Gala, they own magazines, and they own, you know, Instagram, Shade Room, stuff like that, but I had never really gotten to their music, so I don't know. It's a good way to broaden your horizon, for sure, and it's cool to do, and, yeah, if it's anything like the Mariah Carey fans... They're going to tell you the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over about how amazing she is and stuff like that. And they'll subscribe to your YouTube. That's what I've been doing. But shout out to y'all. I love everybody. And until next episode. Now I got to get my fat ass up. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Big Buddha hole.